Greetings, Coach Moore here serving as God's Huckleberry to provide some inspiration and guideposts along the journey from where we are to where we need to be. This podcast will share my life experiences, insights, gains, lessons learned, all while demonstrating where God's providence is interwoven through everyday life. The theme of today's podcast, humility. Yeah, humility's gone out of style. In an era of selfies and social media channels, we're more aware of ourselves than ever before. This concept of self is constantly in the forefront of our minds. I mean, social media pages paint flawless pictures of our lives and the lives around us. But humble people don't feel the need to paint a perfect picture of an ideal life. They can zoom out and objectively obsess their merits or shortcomings. They're more concerned with the quality of their effort, the impact of their lives, and the content of their career. The truly humble person's ego is just like his or her toes. The toes work, the ego works, but neither draws attention to itself. Humble people have true freedom because they rid themselves of the constant need to compare their accomplishments against those around them. They're released from the burden of this comparative scorekeeping we sometimes catch ourselves in. But the more we focus on who and whose we are, the less we need to assign any energy to who someone else might be or want us to be. The dictionary defines humility as lack of vanity or self-importance. It allows us to lose concern for being right and focus on doing right for the greater good. People with humility do not think less of themselves. They think of themselves less. It's a very key distinction. They do not deny their talents and capabilities. Rather, they recognize these strengths pass through them, not come from them. Humility is vitally important, but it's mostly overlooked in society today. Every coach, manager, boss will declare that they want teammates or contributors that are humble and hungry. You know, they advocate for the we guys over the me guys. But I like to think of humble people as the glue guys, right? To have on the team or an organization because humble people are always thinking about how to make everyone around them better. They'll take the time to acknowledge contributions of others publicly and privately to build the esteem of the team. Yet we rarely put much effort into defining and cultivating the virtue of humility in organizations, teams, and even in ourselves. A humbled heart is a teachable heart. No one reaches their full potential without the help of others. The humble person welcomes critique and correction from coaches, bosses, teammates, and colleagues. Great example of this is Ben Franklin. Right? Before he became one of America's ultimate success stories, he was convinced he was totally mediocre. At 27 years old, he was disgruntled, but he set out on a project that he called Moral Perfection. And he made a list of 12 areas of attitude and action that he felt needed improvement. When he asked a friend to comment on his list, the friend noted that Franklin's pride showed itself frequently in conversation. So Franklin then added humility as the 13th virtue in his project where he listed its definition as imitate Jesus. So in the book of Micah, we read, what the Lord requires of you, only do justice and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. Micah chapter six, verse eight. King Solomon declared, the result of humility and fear of the Lord is riches, honor, and life. It's Proverbs 22, four. One of my favorite verses that epitomizes why we are to be humble is Peter's exhortation in his first epistle. All of you close yourself with humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but bestows favor on the humble. Our job is to humble ourselves, and God's job is to exalt us. If we reverse the rules and do his job by exalting ourselves, then he will do our job for us and humble us. So well-used tenant in co coaching football. It's called low man wins. It's a great analogy to humility. And this low man wins, it's all about pad level. It's about getting into a low position. It gives you more leverage on your opponent. It also being lower to the ground gives you stronger base, more balance, more lower body strength. When God first appeared to Moses in Exodus, he appeared as a lowly burning bush, not from some lofty position. And then later when he was feeding the Jews, he fed them with manna. And he did it in such a way to teach them a great lesson. The manna was on the ground, right? They had to go and gather it. And for that to happen, they had to bend down. So to get their blessings, they had to lower themselves. 
the low and humble man wins. He has leverage in God's eyes. And just like the athletic position, to be humble, it takes core strength and inner strength, especially to stay in that position for a prolonged period of time. It's a life of sacrificially serving others. It puts you in a winning position that will lead to a life of significance. Let's face it, we're society's most important asset. We the people, no matter what the policies are or the procedures that are being used. We must be people who seek to bless each other and treat each other with, teach each other with dignity. You know, the whole law is fulfilled in that one statement, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Think about the early church when it was starting out. How did it have such a profound impact with no money, no power, no influence? It was by being humble. It was giving their heart and soul to God. It was loving and serving others selflessly and sacrificially. It was loving the unlovable, caring for those that no one else would care for, risking their lives to comfort those dying of infectious diseases, sacrificing their own possessions for orphans and widows. Those actions were so powerful, society around them could not help but notice. In chapter 2 of St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, it's a plea for unity and humility. His request is to serve one another as one serves Christ. Quote, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. When thinking about humility, be moonlight is one of my favorite metaphors in this area. The moon does not create its own light. It merely reflects the light of the sun. So we need to have the light that we're showing be like the light of the moon. It's not coming from us. It's reflecting the light that the Son of God has given us. Another analogy with humility is that last mile, right? It's a phrase that's widely used in the telecommunication industry, and that's where I've been making my living for the past several decades. The last mile refers to that final leg of the network that delivers the service to the customers. It's you know, it reaches the end user's premises. It's typically the speed bottleneck in the communications network. Whatever has come before its capacity is limited by what that last mile is. And these last mile links, they're significant in number, they're expensive, and they're most difficult to upgrade. So us as Christians act as that last mile we have the opportunity to connect over and over with everyday people every single day of our lives. It's a lot of connections. It can be difficult. It can be costly. But without our work in this last mile, there'll be less adoption. All the earlier efforts and costs will be wasted. When I think about humility, there's an expression, less is more, comes to mind. And I've got a piece of artwork displayed in my office that a friend of mine made for me, and he titled it, Less is More. And it came from when he was visiting, my kids were in elementary school, we were at a fundraiser, we were doing this thing called spin art, where you put a board on a turntable and you put some paint on it, you spin it really fast, and you look at the design it makes. Well, I was using globs of paint, spinning at high speed and just totally covering the board. But my artist friend, much more subtle approach, showed me the effectiveness of less paint. It's extremely significant such that I keep it in my office. And it's that mantra that less is more. Simplicity and clarity will lead to a good design. You know, you'll hear less is more often in architecture and furniture for that reason. But as Christians, we're called to a life of simplicity, frugality, humility, where less is more. At what point do our possessions, wealth, and status become the focus of our journey? Think about it. The less of earth we covet the more of heaven we cherish. Psalm 37, 16 says, Better the meagerness of the righteous one than the plenty of the wicked. God will reverse things, rewarding the righteous and punishing the wicked. In the words of John the Baptist referencing Jesus, I must decrease so he can increase. We live in a world where ego gets attention, but modesty gets results, where arrogance makes headlines, but humility makes a difference. Let's be humble. Let's get those results. Let's make a difference. In closing, let's make sure we're doing our part in serving others and trust by doing so that he will set, we will set the world on fire. Let's answer his call. Let's leave a legacy and make a difference in his kingdom.
Rejoice and Godspeed.